I don't recall Bates being any too certain about the legality of my proclamation. Just it wasn't a right criminal. Somewhere's in between. Back when I rode the legal circuit in Illinois, I defended a woman from Metamora named Melissa Goings, 77 years old. She said she murdered her husband. He was 83. He was choking her, and uh, she grabbed a hold of a stick of firewood and fractured his skull, and he died. In his will, he wrote, I expect she has killed me. If I get over it, I will have revenge. No one was keen to see her convicted. He was that kind of husband. I asked the prosecuting attorney if I might have a short conference with my client. She and I went into a room in the courthouse, but I alone emerged. The window in the room was found to be wide open. It was believed the old lady may have climbed out of it. I told the bailiff right before I left her in the room, she asked me where she could get a good drink of water. And I told her Tennessee. Mrs. Goins wasn't seen no more in Metamora. Enough justice had been done. He even forgave the bondsman her bail. I decided that the Constitution gives me war powers, but no one knows just exactly what those powers are. Some say they don't exist. I don't know. I decided I needed them to exist to uphold my oath to protect the Constitution, which I decided meant that I could take the rebel slaves from mama's property can confiscate in a war. That might recommend a suspicion that I agree with the Rebs, that their slaves are property in the first place. Of course I don't. Never have. I'm glad to see any man free, and if calling a man property or war contraband does the trick, why I could have the opportunity. Now here's where it gets truly slippery. I use the law allowing for the seizure of property in a war knowing it applies only to the property of governments and citizens of belligerent nations. But the South ain't a nation. That's why I can't negotiate with them. So if, in fact, the Negroes are property according to the law, have I the right to take the rebels' property from them? If I assist the rebels only, and not citizens of a belligerent country? And slippery still, I maintain it ain't our actual southern states in rebellion, but only the rebels living in those states, the laws of which states remain in force. The laws of which states remain in force. That means that since it states, laws that determine whether Negroes can be sold as slaves, as property, the federal government doesn't have a say in that. At least not yet. Then Negroes in those states are slaves, hence property, hence my war powers allow me to confiscate them as such. So I confiscated them. But if I'm a respecter of state laws, how can I illegally free with my proclamation? As I do, unless I'm canceling state laws. I felt the war demanded it. My oath demanded it. I felt right with myself, and I hoped it was still legal to do it. I'm hoping still. Two years ago, I proclaimed these people emancipated, then henceforth and forever free. But let's say the course decided I had no authority to do it. They may well decide that. Say there's no amendment abolishing slavery. Say it's after the war and I can no longer use my war powers to just ignore the courts. Decisions like I sometimes felt I had to do. Might those people I freed be ordered back into slavery? That's why I'd like to get the 13th Amendment through the house. And on its way, 
ratification by the states wrap the whole slavery thing up forever and I. As soon as I'm able, now, end of this month, I'd like you to stand behind me like my cabinets most always do. As the preacher said, I could write short sermons, but once I start, I get too lazy to stop. Well, the people did that, I suppose. I signed the Emancipation Proclamation a year and a half before my second election. I felt I was within my power to do it. However, I also felt that I might be wrong about that. I knew the people would tell me. I gave them a year and a half to think about it. And then they elected me. And come February the 1st, I intend to sign the 13th Amendment. 